Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the shop. It's come to the point where I'm needing to replace the chuck from my lathe. This is a 5 inch Cushman and it is the original to my lathe. It has had a pretty hard life. I did get this lathe from a school, so no telling how many people used and abused it. As you can see on the surfaces of the chuck jaws, there's quite a few apprentice marks. And then also in the chuck body itself, there's this ledge that looks like somebody has taken a boring bar to it a couple times. And those aren't even the main issues that I'm having. If you notice here on the clamping surface of the chuck jaw, it is wider at the top than it is at the bottom. And what that means is when I'm holding a workpiece that goes through the chuck, from about midpoint down, that is the only part of the chuck jaw that's actually clamping. And up here at the top, there's a few thousandths gap. Now for the smaller, or the larger work pieces rather, that's not much of an issue. But with the smaller stuff, that gap at the top causes flex. And it prevents me from making accurate cuts and also has a possibility of catching the cutting tool and bending the work piece or breaking it. Now this could be fixed with a tool post grinder, but I don't have one and I don't know anybody that does. So the cheaper option for me was to just buy a new chuck. <clears throat> and I'm not going to be getting rid of this chuck. It eventually at some point I may be able to fix this issue and continue to use this chuck. But what I'm going to do now, since I'm, getting a new chuck is I'm going to put the external holding clamping jaws and this will be dedicated to this chuck will be dedicated to that because these jaws are still in really good shape there are a few apprentice marks that you can see here and it looks like the boring bar got caught on the tip here but those aren't going to be an issue now the chuck that I got to replace it is basically the same chuck only you know cheaper that I got from Shars it's a five inch and it has the same type of jaws only they're much bigger and it did come with the external jaws as well now uh, upon an initial inspection of this chuck it does seem fairly well made um, most of the surfaces, mating surfaces for the jaws to the body and the surfaces of the jaws themselves have all been ground. The one thing that I did notice is these angled spots on the chuck jaws here are not equal. What I'm, what I'm saying is that like for this Cushman, those angled, when you pull the jaws all the way in, those angled surfaces match up perfectly. Whereas with this chuck, they do not. You know, they clamp down on the inside here, and then there's a gap on the outside. And that, I don't think that'll be much of an issue for most anybody. Um, I can count on one hand the number of times that I've actually used the surface for clamping. So it, it's not going to be an issue for me, I don't think. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take this chuck apart and clean it and regrease it and check all the surfaces and see what, the, see what it looks like on the inside. Now, as I'm opening up the jaws, I can feel there's like a grittiness on the inside. I'm hoping that's not a problem with the gears and I've seen videos of these being taken apart and the lubrication that they put in there actually has grit to it. So I'm hoping that's just what it is and not actually a problem with the gears. So we'll see. Now, these uh, jaws are marked, number one, 
number two, and number three. And then the body is marked as well. You can see in here, there's the number one, number two, and number three. Now, I'm not too concerned with that, uh, where the position of the jaws are, because once I get this, uh, the backing plate on and mounted to the chuck, I'm going to be moving the jaws in the three positions, within the three positions, to find the ones that have the least amount of run out. The gears do look really good and there is a little bit of a grit to it. I don't see any type of lubrication in there, but there is <clears throat> what looks like probably the swore from when it was machined. Uh, they just didn't clean it out very well. Now these uh, beveled gears, they look fairly well machined. I don't uh, see any major issues with them. So I think they're going to be just fine. Now the scroll looks very well machined. The surface is all ground. The bevel part of the gears. Again, there's, I don't see a whole lot of problems with them. Uh, so I think they're going to be okay too. But as I said before, there is a kind of a grittiness to whatever's on the inside of here. I don't think this chuck was cleaned. I think the only thing that they did was they machined it and just put it together. You know, they didn't bother to clean all the swore from the machining and all the uh, whatever type of coolant that they use during the machining. So now that we have it apart, I am going to go off camera. I'm going to clean it all and then we'll put it back together and see how it's working from there. All right, we got it all cleaned up. I don't know if you can tell on the inside here. It's quite a bit shinier. There was a lot of swarf on the inside from the machining. We got all that cleaned out, got the gears cleaned off, and now we're going to put it back together. Now I'm going to be fast forwarding through this. I just wanted to mention that the lubrication that I'm using um, for the inside here where the scroll meets the body and the scroll itself, I'm going to use whey oil and then I'm going to use just grease for the bevel gears and then whey oil again for the T-slots that the jaws ride in. We got the chuck all put back together and lubed. That grittiness that I was feeling when I initially took it apart is gone. So taking it apart, cleaning it, and re-lubing it did the trick for that. So if you decide to get one of these chucks, that should be the first thing that you take care of. 
overall first impressions I'm pretty pleased with it uh, all of the important surfaces are ground there are of course corners that were cut to uh, cheapen the price one of them being the uh, angled surfaces here on the chuck jaws as I mentioned earlier they don't match up perfectly when you close the jaws all the way but for most uh, hobby machinists that's not going to be an issue it's certainly not going to be one for me now each of these uh, chucks come with a uh, test certificate this particular one was inspected by uh, inspector number two on 926 of 2015 so a little over two years ago. Now I would take this with a grain of salt. Uh, I wouldn't put much value into these numbers. The As fast as these chucks come off the line, as fast as they're produced, I highly doubt that they go through and check every single one. But we'll give them the benefit of the doubt. Once uh, we get a backing plate on it, we'll check these numbers and see how they match up. Now I'm not going to be able to do these because I don't have a test ring uh, to test the outside jaws but we can do the inside jaws with the uh, piece of drill rod and speaking of the backing plate in the next video we're going to make one and I've got something special for that so stay tuned with that that'll do it for this video thank you for watching I'll see you next time